at this point in history, what does RNC even stand for? Republican nationalists, criminals. Conservatives, chuds, Fox News. They'll spend entire episodes covering the crime in liberal cities. And they'll do it without context. Take San Francisco, for example. San Francisco has extremely wealthy people, whether it be old world money or the tech bros. And they're living side by side with people that are extremely poor. Decriminalizing robbery when such a situation like that exists, of course it's gonna be a disaster. For them it just breaks down to, oh liberals can't run a city, look at this. When the truth of the matter is much more complex, or maybe not that complex, it's capitalism run amok. But you're not gonna hear that. You're not gonna hear that, you're not gonna hear that on Rupert Murdoch's channel. And it's the same thing with Portland. You listen to Fox, you think, oh liberals, Liberals have turned this city into an apocalyptic Mad Max scenario. When the truth is there's like one neighborhood where Fox News grabs all its footage when it runs these segments about Portland, where it gets its B-roll. One neighborhood and again, zero solutions. And I'm talking about first-hand experience. I was in Portland. It's nothing like the picture they paint for you. I didn't get mugged. A lot of like friendly people. And they even make you do this when you cross the street. There's a little sign saying, hey, I'm crossing the street. It's not like what you're seeing on Fox News. Here's the thing, and everybody knows this. Large cities skew liberal. They all do. And it's because when you get a population that much, it becomes a model for what the country is as a whole. And if you're a Republican, that might make you mad. But you're very much the minority in this country. And you have been for the past 30 years. I mean, all we have to do is look at the popular vote for president. A Republicans won the popular vote one time in the last 30 years. And that election had largely to do with us being in a war and September 11th and this hyper patriotism that was going on at the time. And a couple nights a week on Fox News, you'll hear about these liberal hellholes, but you'll never hear a success story. Karen Bass, the mayor of Los Angeles, someone I met, we had a fundraiser for her back when she was still in the house. She got 21,000 people off the street. 21,000 homeless people. And I gotta say, we went to a Christmas bar last weekend in downtown LA. And it was like night and day from the time we'd been there like two years ago. You're seeing the changes happen. My point being, this is an evergreen topic for Fox News, Newsmax, your crazy uncle at, at Christmas. Because larger cities are always going to be liberal. And larger cities are always going to have more problems, especially with inequality and crime. It's just the way it is. Fox News and the other parts of right-wing media have to be very limited in how they approach the subject of crimes in these, in these cities, homelessness, because their audience are very limited. And then when you get into actual statistics of cities, your chances of being murdered in them, it's a totally different story, as you can imagine. And so many of these high murder rates are cities in the South. The South, which has always been a place with the best food, the best barbecue in the world, and the worst policies imaginable. The worst Republican policies you can find in the entire country. And looking at this map, looking at these stats, what, you got like one in 30 chance of getting murdered in Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee. It's important at this point, if any chuds are still here and you want to remain in your bubble, to eject from this video right now. Head back over to, I don't know, Charlie Smallface. Whatever you guys watch. Maybe go grab a cookie as a reward for at least watching this much of the video. And then you can keep your narrative of my liberal cities, my liberal cities alive. Because I'd like to explain a concept to you, Republicans. Cities are contained within these things called states. And these states pass laws which hold precedent over individual cities and municipals. Today, you learn. And as we start looking at the actual statistics in states, it's not looking so good for the party of coups and the party that defends school shootings. Eight out of the top 10 states for murders are red states. And that's including Georgia, which I feel like we really should include because Georgia's legislature is still very much red. So let's call it nine out of the top 10 states. I'm calling it nine. Out of the top 10 states where you have the greatest chance to be murdered. A single street in Portland, or nine out of the top 10 states where you have the greatest chance of being shot, stabbed, bludgeoned to death, I don't know, probably mostly shot. Now, which to you is a bigger problem than a network with news 
in their title should be covering. I'm asking honestly. This is just to lay some groundwork. I don't want to relitigate how backwards states like Alabama and Mississippi are because all of you who regularly tune into this channel, if you're not if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that now if you like this kind of content. All of you know this already. So we don't need to relitigate this. This is not what it's about. Instead, I want to pull out one more time, which coincidentally is the same thing Trump said right before Eric was conceived, but but I digress. I want to pull out from states to nations, which for the chuds here, I feel like I'm giving you a civics lesson here. The states make up the nation. This guy right here, Donald Trump, Jesus Christ returned to earth. This guy right here received countless passes from the time like Obama was president until he won in 2016. Everything was a joke, right? I mean, he went after the first black president. He said he wasn't a real American. Obama had to show his birth certificate because of this guy right here. Funny stuff, right? And back in 2015, his supporters, even not his supporters, just Republicans towing that line, said he was just joking when he said he wasn't going to leave. He wasn't going to leave the White House if he lost. And he just kept joking all the way through it, right? Very fine people on both sides. Proud boys, stand back and stand by. All just jokes. He was just joking about wasting billions of dollars building an archaic wall, pretending like Mexico was going to pay for it. Okay, maybe, maybe that one actually was a joke. After a decade of these hilarious jokes from Mango Jesus here, we get this one. We get this one in 2023. Here he is on his very low rated, got terrible ratings. I'm sure that's in his craw. But here he is with his town hall with uh, that objective moderator, Sean Hannity. The media has been focused on this and attacking you. Sean's throwing in the softball. Under no right circumstances, here. you are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except Look, what? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I Funny stuff, right? He's only going to be a dictator on day one. Because that's usually how dictators work. They're only a dictator for their first day. And then the rest of the, the, rest of the 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, 20 years go smoothly. Chuds will say he's joking. And then the rest of the clip they'll say, oh, he was talking about drilling. He was talking about drilling and border security. Now, if you take these chuds at their word and ask yourself, why would Trump need to be a dictator on day one to drill for oil or to do anything with the border? Nothing about that is connected or funny or attached to the very specific question. <laughs> the very specific no question Hannity asked him. And I guess if you just tonight. really don't think about it at all, it could make sense. The thing is, we've all seen this in action. So when he says he's going to be a dictator on day one, most of this country, I would hope all this country, but most of this country knows that's not a joke. And you don't have to be the biggest history buff in the world to know that most dictators are dictators on day one. Now take no his dictator on day one comment. Put it in a broader context of the Project 2025 plan. I did an episode on it if you want to check it out. It's not that long of an episode. It just covers the highlights. But the highlights are a purge and replacement of our government with only party loyalists. And when I say party loyalists, I mean MAGA party loyalists. Not even, not even Republicans anymore. You have to specifically swear allegiance to Trump. So you take that concept of sworn allegiance to a single person, a cult of personality, a dear leader scenario. And then you tack on this Christo fascist weirdo. Trust the American people to draw their own conclusions. We should not, it's not, they like should not be dictated by some narrative and accept that as fact. Right. So they can review the tapes themselves. Uh, we're going through a methodical process of releasing them as quickly as we can. As you know, we have to blur some of the faces of persons who uh, participated in, in, uh, in the events of that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and, uh, and, they don't and, want and to the be charged by the DOJ and, and to have to other be retaliated uh, you know, against. concerns and problems. So uh, that's a slow process to get it they done. Don't want We're the working steadily on it. We've hired additional personnel to do that. And uh, all of those tapes ultimately at the end will, will be out so everybody can see them and draw their own conclusion. Let me go to we have to blur the faces of the criminals of the insurrectionists, because we don't want them to be retaliated against by law enforcement. 
The media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except, Except for day one. After hearing that Mike Johnson is blurring out criminals' faces, insurrectionists' faces. One street in Portland. One street. Fox News coverage, hours, days of coverage. One street in Portland. That street has homelessness, it has drugs, it has violence. One street, while we sit back and watch the Republican National Crime Syndicate draw up plans, draw up plans to seize this Democratic Republic from us. And just like the Ku Klux Klan, MAGA Mike here, Mike Johnson, will hide all their faces. Try that in a small town? Why, when you can just try it on the national stage? This man right here may not say out loud all the crazy shit Trump does, but he is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, because he's enabling it. And why is he enabling it? Because he believes he's ordained by God. He believes he's the second coming of Moses. I shit you not. He's talking literally. This isn't a figure of figure speech. This is bad shit. This is a new Moses. He's talking about the government. <laughs> he thinks the Speaker of the House is the equivalent of Moses. And that God is choosing him. Do you understand how bad shit this guy is? The concept of being ordained by voters doesn't creep its way into this speech. He doesn't say, what would the voters want? Who do they want me to choose? He's saying he's staying up at night talking to God. And God is telling him who to choose. He's equating being Speaker of the House to being fucking Moses. Who is this for? Who listens to this shit and is like, oh my God, that is how it should be done. That is the country we want. And there's dozens more examples just like this. But just with these like very specific examples we've looked at in this episode, it's not hard to see the blueprint that's happening with the Republican Party. The recipe they're looking for is to make America a criminal authoritarian state where Christo fascists like Mike Johnson can use foot soldiers, like the Proud Boys and other right-wing militias. They will be used as the boots on the ground. While the Kochs use Project 2025 as their blueprint. Just go look at it. You don't even watch my video on it. You should, but you could watch anything on it. You could read it yourself if you, if you got an afternoon to read a thousand pages. The Kochs have promised in their 1,000 page manifesto to replace 40,000 people in this government. 40,000 people with strict loyalists. Strict loyalists to this Christo fascism. And you can even see this in the peripherals of the incels and weirdos that attach themselves to the MAGA movement. They're already adopting these Christo fascist ideals, even if they don't believe in them. I mean, look at this. This Chud posts all the Grand Theft Autos he doesn't play. He could have just said, I've never played any Grand Theft Autos. Or he could have not tweeted at all. Who gives a shit if you haven't played any of them? What, who's this tweet for? It's for Elon. Elon comes right in and says, oh, I tried to play it, but they try to make me shoot an imaginary cop in a video game. A guy who bought an entire platform just to feed the right-wing loonies out there who plan violence in the real world, not some NPC cop in a game. The badass who posts this, this is my nightstand. 
This is my nightstand. Caffeine-free Diet Coke and two guns. I mean, just picture if George Soros bought Twitter. Change the whole structure of it so that your timeline was nothing but left-wing talking points. You log in and all you see is like Rachel Meadow and AOC. And then George Soros comes out of comments, starts shitting on GTA. The beloved institution. One of the greatest games ever made. You start shitting on that. You know the right wing would jump on that. And that's immediately proven by the next comment. This dick writer here. What's it? Ian Miles Chong? I don't even know who this is. I had to look him up. I guess he's not even American, right? He lives in Malaysia. And he's famous. He's famous for being an incel. And he's so happy that he doesn't have to shoot cops in cyberpunk. I don't know. Where do these people live? They're so terminally online. He's so happy he doesn't have to shoot cops in cyberpunk like Grand Theft Auto. Even though he wrote five articles before he became this right-wing peddler, this Elon Musk dick writer, about how great Grand Theft Auto is. And this stupid chain of tweets that starts with a guy saying, I've never played, I've never played this, I'm better than you. It leads to a white knighting, right? And this is what I'm talking about, the peripherals of what's happening with this Christo-fascism. They see where the power is. They see where the power is consolidating. Because the right-wing Christians have come home to roost in this party. And they hold a lot of the cards right now. So chuds like this write stupid shit like this. They comment to stupid shit like this. They see who can white knight the hardest. Because the power is consolidated. In this Republican National Crime Syndicate. And they want some of that power. They want some of that influence now. Look, I talk about the Frankenstein nature of the Republican Party a lot on this channel, right? It's a, it's a bunch of fragmented, radical groups loosely stitched together. All I'm trying to show is the symptoms of what's happening. Whether that's Mike Johnson from within the government who has actual power, who can actually fuck with the election, to the Kochs who fund it, to the peripherals. These guys like, you know, this incel right here who has no power. Honestly, I can't tell why this guy couldn't get laid. What lady doesn't want this rolling over on you? Did you come, baby? No. No, I didn't. So when Fox News tries to get you worked up about a single street in Portland, when they try to spin a city which has extreme wealth and extreme poverty, capitalism gone awry, when Sean Hannity tries his hardest to just get Trump to say, no, I won't be a dictator, but even that doesn't work. It's all a distraction from the big crime that's happening. The national crime. The crime that's not taking place on a single street, but every street. And that's distracting you from Big Boy's 91 felonies. Big Boy's attempt to overthrow a government. And most of all, it's a distraction because he's gonna try it again. If you like content like this, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. The Chud Report. The media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except for? He's going crazy. Except for day one.